Men, this one is for you, and I want to talk to you about the amino acid glutamine and glutamate and prostate cancer. Increased levels of plasma glutamate levels directly correlate with the prostate Gleason score and the primary cancer's aggression. This finding could lead to less invasive ways to diagnose prostate cancer rather than a biopsy and points to natural treatments for blocking glutamate rather than hormone therapy targeting testosterone. One research study published in 2012 was very clear in its conclusion, also showing that in men with metastatic cancer, serum glutamate was considerably higher than in men with only a primary tumor. Back in 2012, the researchers suggested that it would be a much more accurate test for prostate cancer than taking a PSA reading or having a biopsy with its risk of infection or disease spread. Glutamate is an alternative fuel for cancer cells after sugar. It can be made from folic acid, glucose, and is involved in fat metabolism, but its primary precursor in glutamine, the amino acid widely available in protein, especially animal protein. Glutamine is also a non-essential amino acid, meaning that if your body runs short, you simply make it from other sources. Your muscles are glutamine rich. Your brain holds about 25% of the glutamine in your body. Glutamine is also available in meats such as chicken, game, and steak, and the bone broth. It is also found in cheese, and glutamate uh, actually, or blocking glutamate, reduces prostate growth. Another conclusion of the study was that glutamate uh, blocking actually reduces the growth, the invasion, and the migration of prostate cancer, as does or what we would look at as a glutamate blockade. Now, even if you don't get glutamine from your diet, your body will make the amino acid if and when it senses you're deprived. That's probably because the cells, especially immune cells, need some glutamine to do their jobs. But if you have cancer, glutamine can spur tumor growth. While you'll never be able to eliminate the glutamine from your diet, you can, however, eat foods that keep cancer cells from using the glutamine. So here's what, why, and how to do it. Number one, green tea. But the green tea extract must contain what we call EGCG, which actually inhibits an enzyme, glutamate dehydrogenase, that helps cancer cells use glutamine. There's, and, but here's the kicker on this one. With EGCG, men, you want to take this nutrient every single day because, like I said, you can't get rid of glutamine out of your body. It's going to be in your diet no matter what. But what happens is when you take this green tea extract, this EGCG, it allows the glutamine to do what it needs to do in your body, but it blocks it from feeding prostate cancer. That's the big focus here. And men, even if you don't have prostate cancer and you're the over the age of 50, you can take EGCG every single day. Well, just to protect yourself. Then there's the herb ashwagandha. This is something that we know comes from India. It contains a very particular enzyme which keeps you from digesting the glutamine. So, and you can take ashwagandha every single day because it's also great for immune system, it's great for testosterone levels, and it's great for your thyroid. Also, look at the seeds of fresh peppers. I've always been a big believer in taking cayenne pepper as a supplement. But all peppers from these, uh, from this, the capsium family includes what we would, you know, look at eating large sweet bell peppers. And a lot of the strong ones like cayenne, habanero, jalapeno, these will actually contain the enzyme within their seeds to help block the glutamine in your body, thus helping to prevent from feeding the prostate cancer cells. When it comes to treating overall prostate cancer, it'll take more than just taking the EGCG or ashwagandha. You need to look at reducing the bad fats and the bad oils from your diet completely and avoiding all processed and refined sugar. Look, 
All cancer cells will feed off of sugar, but that's not their only source of food. Many people who have cancer think, okay, I'm going to get all the sugar out of my diet. I'm going to do everything naturally, follow my doctor's orders, and everything will be okay. That's not actually true. Every cancer feeds off of something else besides sugar, and there's a way to find out what that cancer feeds off of. So I suggest getting Jane McClellan's book and get her course on how to starve cancer, which you can get by going to my website at drwardbond.com. Her book and the cancer course will help build the complete protocol to fight prostate cancer and even other cancers, even more effectively than your oncologist who doesn't understand nutrition. Her program will not interfere with any traditional cancer therapies, and thousands of people from around the world are beating cancer by understanding that each different type of cancer has a different feeding pathway. Once you understand what feeds your cancer, you shut off those pathways and the cancer dies. Jane McClellan beat two different types of terminal cancer. And you can go on my website or my YouTube channel and watch the two interviews with Jane McClellan to learn more. So go to drwardbond.com to order her book, How to Starve Cancer, as well as ordering the cancer course, which will teach you exactly the 13 points you need to do and to follow on how to starve cancer the correct way. Her book is phenomenal. People around the world have ordered this, followed it. I even have a friend of mine who beat head and neck cancer by following her exact protocol. This program works. But men, I've been talking to you today about prostate cancer. So for great prevention, you can take a green tea extract that contains that EGCG. You can get ashwagandha, get the bad fats out of your diet, get the uh, processed sugars out of your diet in the areas of prevention, but to also to treat it. Hey, stick around. I'll be right back with more. Congratulations, Dr. Ward Bond, on 20 years of extraordinary work. I'm Mary Lou Falcone, and as an advocate and spokesperson for Lewy Body Dementia Awareness, I can't thank you enough for the light that you've shed on this disease through many interviews that you've done with me and others. Thank you, bless you, and may the next 20 years be fabulous ones.